It's good to see you, Congressman. Been yeah, too long, to sir. You. We appreciate it. Congratulations on reelection. Oh, um, thanks. You think about this concept in the financial markets of too big to fail. Has yeah. China become too big to confront? No, not at all. And I think there are a lot of, you know, politicians in the United States, particularly in our party, you know, the Republican Party, that are saying and calling out China on all the issues in your opening monologue. And I would add to that data trafficking, basically stealing the, the data of Americans to, to population map the United States to your uh, long list. But yeah, there are plenty of politicians calling them out. It's just not the White House. It's not the commander in chief. And unfortunately, uh, you know, that sends a very bad message to China and to our allies, particularly in places like Latin America. F fair enough. Uh, but Congress can do a lot. Are, are we at the point where you would support sanctions against Xi and against the business interests of the Chinese Communist Party unilaterally? No, there are better ways than sanctions as it relates to China. The, I would submit doing something like the bill that I actually filed last last year, the Nearshoring Act, the Western Hemisphere Nearshoring Act, and we're going to actually do that bill when we're in the majority. Uh, it basically provides low interest loans, not with taxpayer dollars, by the way. It uses the China tariff money to buy the loan down and and use private investment dollars to move businesses from China to Latin America. And to the United States, I have another bill that brings that manufacturing back to the United States. That's, of course, reshoring. But those are that's, I think, the best way. We cripple them that way a lot faster. Sanctions, you know, plus, minus, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But nearshoring and taking that manufacturing, moving it to the to, and shortening the supply chain, you know, Biden today said Ameri yeah, offended every American by saying they don't understand supply chains. Well, we do. And let's shorten them by getting the business in uh, either in the United States or in Latin America. Fair, fair enough on the sanctions point. Uh, Pentagon report that China is likely to have 1,500 nuclear warheads by 2035. U.S. currently has 3,700, although this is China's, you know, trebling the amount of warheads they have um, right now uh, or more. Um, this hasn't just been a, a Biden administration issue. This has been no. going back for for decades by by presidents of both parties why is confronting the chinese i'm thinking even george h w bush who after tiananmen square sent brent scrocroft over and said hey look it's fine we're going to patch everything back together no one's willing to call out xi jinping and say we're going to hold you personally responsible for the safety of these protesters look it's about the pocketbook leland i mean these guys it's about you know, large corporations in the United States, even in the Trump administration, which probably took the hardest line against China, you had this incredible uh, split between commerce and the national security side. So DOD and uh, the Intel folks, they were all saying, this is an enemy. And then the Commerce Department was continuing to send, you know, high tech equipment to China. So this sort of split personality occurred even in, in the administration that was the strongest against China. And we've just got to recognize we're selling ourselves to an enemy that, uh, I mean, your description was very accurate at the beginning. The Uyghurs, the, the way they're handling, you know, Belt and Road Initiative, bully diplomacy, debt diplomacy, they're not good guys. And uh, it's time for America to wake up. Uh, your point about Apple, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, well, maybe I maybe I need to switch to another platform. I mean, I it, it's uh, I, I, I did. It's I, I saw the tweet a couple of nights ago or yesterday, I think it was, that said we need to boycott Apple sent from Twitter on iPhone. Uh, so <laughs> go, go with that from what you were. I, I, yeah. I get back to this issue, though, of, of too big to fail, too big to confront. Um, at some point, the horses are out of the barn, and I'm I'm wondering when you consider where China is, uh, how possible it is to once again contain them and stop their desire to be a near peer of the United States or peer. Well, again, you, you cripple the economy by taking business from them. That's that's the trick, and of course, the technology flows. We've got to stop. You know, right, but, but aren't they just going to invade Taiwan and then it's game over? Listen, if they invade Taiwan, that's a huge hit because Taiwan makes 94% of the high-end semiconductors and about 50% of all semiconductors, and that, that devastates the economy. So yeah. that can't, I mean, we can't, we can't allow that to happen. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. 
And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.